Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're so delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We know what an honor and a privilege it is to be there. Well, we would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, today we have Ellen Ginoli, Christina Freeman, and they both, these beautiful nurses, these lovely ladies, are with the National Association of Catholic Nurses USA. You could go to their website, nacn-usa.org. So maybe you're out there and you're like, I didn't know there was a National Association of Nurses. Yeah. I'm a nurse. I sure would like to join, <clears throat> right? And so it's a beautiful, um, they're going to share with us about the organization. They're also going to share with us about the beauty and the vocation and the joy of yes. being a nurse yeah. and being called to that beautiful As ministry. As we were preparing for this show, Joy, I just, it felt like an, an, a spiritual intuition or hope maybe. I know it's a hope for sure. And I was just saying, wow, we're doing this show and, and it really is a hope that there may be some young people out there, yes. um, young men or young women, uh, maybe they're homeschooling kids or just other people that are seeing the show. And we're hearing so much about nurses these days amidst the pandemic. Right. And that, that God's stirring in, in, in these hearts. And maybe they're not young people. Maybe they're older people that are going to go into the profession. And, and that they'll feel called, perhaps, mm -hmm. like a vocational call to some degree to be a nurse. Right. I want to be a nurse or I want to be in the health profession. Well, maybe there are people that are in nursing school and that are getting ready to gradu graduate or they've just graduated and they're Catholics. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe they've never heard of the National Association of Catholic Nurses USA. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and maybe God's calling you to be a part of this. So maybe you've been a nurse for years, Catholic nurse, and you're doing a great work out there. But you need the fellowship. You mm -hmm. need the spirituality. You need the training. You need to be a part of that community. Pray God's calling, perhaps God's calling you to be a part of this wonderful, wonderful association. And Joy, as we were saying, mentioning the pandemic and, and COVID, in the midst of all the hardship and the sorrow and the sickness and death and fear and all this, it seems like nurses in a special way have been lifted up, yes. right? And I mean, there's a lot of other people helping too, mm -hmm. doctors and nurses and first responders and police officers as well, ambulances, and they're working with people to get them the help that they need. But nurses in a special way, we see them being honored, mm -hmm. being applauded for. Yes. And it's, I've never seen that before you know, in all my life, but it, it's, 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 they're worthy of that. But what a special time to focus on nurses at this time. Well, and rightfully so. You know, we run a pregnancy medical center, and we are about a block away from the University of Alabama, right here in Birmingham. Univer UAB, Birmingham. UAB. Yeah. And so it's a major, major um, medical facility here in the state of Alabama. And when the coronavirus hit, <clears throat> we were having... Um, you know, we were still going into our office and everything, and we would drive home, and you would see uh, the nurses <laughs> and the doctors coming out of the buildings and working shifts, and and they really looked like they were in a <clears throat> battlefield, and uh, they they were there was heaviness on them in their step, and as they were walking, and and it it broke my heart. I mean, I stopped at the traffic light, and I was just watching what was going on, and really felt called to pray in a, in a deep way just to say, you know, they are on the front lines. They're on the front lines every day, all the time, loving people at, in, at their uh, dying moments, comforting family members, and then doing urgent medical care, yeah. right? So <clears throat> they're skilled, they're trained, but at the end of the day, they're just human beings. And Catholic nurses are being formed and shaped with the heart of God in a very special yeah, way. Yeah. And so um, we're very excited to have these beautiful ladies on. So there's plenty more to come. We're going to take a break at this point. It's the National Association of Catholic Nurses. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
welcome back. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and today we bring to you Ellen Ginoli, Christina Freeman, two lovely ladies who are associated with the National Association of Catholic Nurses USA. You could go to their website, nacn Dot USA. Well, we are just delighted to have you beautiful ladies on at home. And um, we, in the past, we had the Catholic Medical Association on. We've also had, um, I think it was your past president of the National Association of Catholic Nurses on. But Ellen, uh, we'll go to you first, and then we'll go to Christina. But we want you to tell our family at home, what exactly drew you into this beautiful vocation of nursing? And what is the Association of Catholic Nurses, um, how is that working in your life to come up alongside your beautiful ministry? Chris, um, Ellen, why don't you go first? Um, back in high school, I remember thinking about what I you know, was called to do with my life. And there are many wonderful thing, you know, ways to do that, but I thought if people do not have their life, then they cannot grow spiritually. They cannot fulfill their missions if, if they lose their life. And it was like the bottom line for me was, I want to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. I want to help people to live mm -hmm. so that they can fulfill their purpose in life. Wow. So that was a very um, a physical way, you yeah. know, of keeping them alive. At this later stage, um, I've been a nurse all these years, and then I actually uh, spent the last few years teaching nursing. But now I get to talk about my experiences. I get to enter in a different way of maintaining people's lives mm. from, you know, conception to natural death. Excellent. And there are many battlefields to uh, enter in on on yeah. that. Yeah. I. Uh, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. I um, am very concerned about the ethics, and uh, just it, I have been a r rural nurse, very rural, but even there, on a day-to-day -day basis, <laughs> you're confronted. You, you might be filling in at the, at the daytime clinic and someone comes in and they want to get the morning after mm. shot mm -hmm. so that the, if they conceive, they, they will abort that and not mm -hmm. be pregnant. Um, you know, it, it's, there's a fight at every level of nursing mm -hmm. from yes. the most rural, basic, all the way to the, to the yeah. United Nations and the international mm -hmm. seat. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Christina, why don't you share with us again uh, your kind of call into nursing and uh, what has the association done for you uh, to kind of build on your original call, make it more rounded or, or to deepen it? Sure. I found the National Association of Catholic Nurses early in my career as a brand new nurse. I joined nursing and was looking into nursing because I was so struck by this idea of being the hands and feet of Christ mm -hmm. to my fellow man. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what can I go, like, what can I do for my job? What can I go into to really be able to serve <clears throat> another person? Um, and so I thought, well, nursing seems like a great plan. And then as I became a brand new nurse, I began to struggle with all of these new things that I was encountering I had never experienced before. I had questions about care at the end of life for somebody, what the purpose of suffering was, and how I could draw other people to Christ um, in this new role in my job, both coworkers and patients. And so I ended up finding the National Association of Catholic Nurses um, in a desire for some sort of mentorship and inspiration to know that there were people out there who were really living out their faith in the workplace mm. and serving another person with um, a joyful heart in that purpose and mission set forth um, yeah. by Christ. So Beautiful. it's been great. So I, I think there must be for anyone that goes into the nursing profession. And, and by the way, we say nurses, but what are the are there different categories of nurses? Do you receive anyone you know, with that title? What are the different uh, titles for nurses and specialties 
that you uh, have in your association, Ellen? The National Association of Catholic Nurses USA uh, can include, in California, we call LVNs, licensed vocational nurses, mm -hmm. or LPNs mm -hmm. in many other states, licensed practical okay. nurses, and registered nurses of every level. That could be your basic uh, two-year program graduate with a with a license to the highest. We have many uh, <clears throat> doctors of nursing, PhDs, EDDs, uh, doctor of nurse practitioner level. So we cover all of those, and any of those can find a a place if they feel called to enter in and and help with our mission. Beautiful. Now, Ellen, what exactly is your role as the president? What, what exactly do you do? Um, first of all, the mission, the mission of the board, we're run by a board. I don't make unilateral decisions. Uh, we run everything through the board members. Um, we are to serve the nurses in the association. So what we do sometimes varies depending on who the members are and what they're interested mm -hmm. in. We try to make it possible. I maintain contacts with various people, uh, other organizations throughout the, throughout the world, in fact. And uh, I'm the connection person, but m most of the things I do, I am like informing someone, <coughs> sending it on to the next group or to a certain committee to get something accomplished. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And those, those who are a part of the association in leadership, um, are you sustained? Uh, are you paid for your positions there? Is it all volunteer, some volunteer, some paid people? How does that work? This organization is 100% volunteer. Um, once in a while, we have to hire something out, like we had name tags made by a company that makes ma name tags, you know, one job. Yeah. But the website's maintained by nurses, the articles are by nurses, teachings are by nurses, uh, the signing of documents. We have a team that speaks at the United Nations. We're all nurses mm. and we're all 100% volunteer. Perfect. Now, Christina, what exactly is your role? You're on the communication committee. So what does that mean for you? I am. So I was, when I found the National Association of Catholic Nurses, I was really looking for an opportunity to just get in and meet these people. I was looking for that mentorship aspect. So I reached out to them and I said, hey, could I help with your Facebook page? And they said, yeah, sure. <laughs> so I started working on the Facebook page, but it really was an opportunity to meet so many of these other members um, and so many great friendships have come out of that to know those other nurses working in different areas who are um, inspiring me in my devotion. Perfect. Now tell us about your opportunity that you had with Focus um, when you were there among all those thousands of college students. It's absolutely incredible. I would say anybody who has not had a chance to go to a Focus seat conference or an SLS 20 who is in college or a little bit beyond should definitely go. There were 17,000 other young Catholics there, and Catholic Medical Association invited NACN to come and to be a part of their booth. So we were able to dialogue with other nursing students, um, other medical students, and kind of have an introduction with them and say, hey, we are an organization who wants to walk with you. We want to help you grow in the nursing profession and as a Catholic nurse. And it was just a, a really incredible opportunity to meet these other Catholic nurses who maybe were feeling a little bit um, of apprehension as they start their new career. And we were able to make that introduction and, and be able to um, say that we want to continue this relationship with you, help you form a local council, and to be strengthened in your faith. Perfect. You mentioned uh, a local council. I'm trying to understand, and I guess that's a part of it. Either one of you can answer this. Probably Ellen uh, may want to take this one. But I'm hearing a lot about um, be within this association because you could really be built up spiritually and you get teaching plus professional training. And I'm just wondering, where does that take place? Are there local councils, as, as you said, state by state or in various areas? 
conferences. I know that you were supposed to be having a conference here this month uh, at, at, at the Shrine in Hansville of the Most Blessed Sacrament. That's not taking place. But how does this take place in terms of, of the teaching and the sharing and community? Ellen? Um, west of the Rockies, we have no councils. Uh, historically, in the early years of uh, this century, in the beginning of the Nurses Association, there were councils established in the East Coast, in the Midwest, um, and many of those maintained, but there were a period of years when the National Association was dissolved. Wow. And in the early 1990s, uh, one of our continuing members, Mary Lee Meehan, felt that, the, well, she was very uh, m moved to go back to school to learn about ethics because at her little local college, uh, I mean, hospital at Cape Cod, they were running into ethical difficulties there. So she went back to school and her, there were no bioethical programs right then. Her master's degree actually was setting up a uh, bioethics program at the University of Chicago. And so she was our <clears throat> nurse, first nurse bioethicist. Um, so councils are under their local bishops. Okay. They do not take a pledge to the association. They have to be under the bishop and have his approval. Uh, but then they can be in association with us. The members can also belong to our uh, association. So there are things going on local in local places here and there in local councils. Um, otherwise, right now, like on the West Coast, nearly everything I do is um, online, uh, you know, through email information, through people interacting with our website. As a result of our having to cancel our conference there at Alabama, mm -hmm. um, we are planning to have the the speakers that were going to speak there do webinars. Okay. They may do them live, but then we'll post them so nurses can uh, hear what the speakers were saying and get their uh, update and information through, through that. And by the way, we're hoping to have our next national conference again at the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament Wonderful. and EWTN <clears throat> in 2021. Perfect, because I think you were all making plans to come and join our audience, right? And that would have been wonderful. Yes. yes. So we yes. were excited about that. But COVID, the coronavirus has uh, tilted our world just a bit, hasn't it? We still hope to do that. Yes, good. Christina, we have about a minute left, and uh, we'll pick this conversation back up uh, on Friday. But just, just close us with, with a thought, what you would want to say maybe the people out there that are considering going into this field of, of nursing or they're already Catholics, but they're not a part of the association, encourage them. Yes, well, I would say, first of all, please pray about the opportunity to become a nurse if you are not already. See if that is what God is calling you to. It is a tremendous opportunity to be able to serve one another at the bedside. Um, mm. And secondly, I would say always remember your first identity, even if you if you are already a nurse, that you are a son and daughter of God, and that that comes first. And to continue to pursue God, stay close to Christ, um, stay close to His church, and to uh, be able to fill yourself up with His sacraments so that you can pour out that love on your patients. Beautiful, great, sound Thank advice. You. So Ellen, Christina, thanks so much for being with us, and we look forward to unpacking more fully the National Association of Catholic Nurses on Friday. God bless you both. God bless you. Thank you so much. We're, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. There's plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, before we wrap up today's show, we're going to check in with Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, you met some of the National Association of Catholic Nurses when they were in Rome, didn't you? 
Well, hi, Jim and Joy, and it is such fun to be with you on a day that you have Ellen and Christina in studio from the National Association of, of Catholic Nurses. And I have to say, when I saw your schedule on your guest list, I thought, wow, this is amazing because I met a number of ladies from this association in Rome serendipit serendipitously at a dinner in my favorite restaurant, La Vittoria, and uh, they knew me from EWTN. We had a lovely chat. I learned about their reason for being in Rome. This was late fall of 2019, and they were in Rome because there was a big meeting with their group and another group called the International Catholic Committee for Nurses and Medical Social Assistance, and they're known as CCMs. And they were all here for a meeting in the Vatican and words by the Pope and everything. And it was fun. I learned a lot. And also, they told me something exciting that they couldn't publish then, but it is official now. And that is the National Association of Catholic Nurses, USA, is going to host in August 2022 the 21st World Congress of CCMs, and this will be on the campus of um, Villanova University. And you know, the more I thought about your theme and thought about the nurses, what they do as, as Catholics, they're nurses, they're Catholics, are they Catholic nurses, is such an important question. And um, you look at society today where there's such a disdain for moral values, for moral teachings, for ethical values that promote life in, in all of its stages. And you, for example, how many times did we read in the early stages of coronavirus that they seem to be categorizing who could live and, and, and who should die with this disease? We have, of course, euthanasia is acceptable in some parts of the world, and that's just a euphemism for for mercy killing. So life has gone really, man has taken life out of the hands of God and in, into their own hands. But um, on the very positive side of things, just about a month ago, May 12th, was International um, Nurses Day. And the Holy Father, Pope Francis, had a wonderful message. I loved it and read it twice, but here's uh, two things that he did say to the nurses. He said, dear nurses, Moral responsibility is the hallmark of your professional service, which cannot be reduced to scientific technical knowledge alone, but must be constantly inspired by your human and humanizing relationship with the sick. And he said associations of healthcare workers play an important role. In addition to offering comprehensive training, they support their individual members making them feel part of a larger body, never dismayed and alone as they face the ethical, economic, and human challenges that their profession demands. So um, a great topic, a lot more to say, but um, as we can say, the clock has chimed. So back to you. Joan, thanks so much for those beautiful reflections and thoughts on uh, nursing and the Catholic Nursing Association. Joe, what a wonderful show today. Um, Ellen and Christina just did a, a wonderful job. And uh, we, we're thankful to all nurses and, mm -hmm. and physicians yes. and first responders and people who work in hospitals at this time. And uh, Christina and Ellen don't necessarily applaud themselves, but we do applaud you. We yes. thank God. We pray for all those that have contracted the virus, nurses and others. Pray for those who've lost their lives. We give thanks and praise. We pray for their soul that they might know the joy and bliss of heaven in the face of Jesus Christ. And we offer a, a call to those that might be considering the nursing vocation. Consider it strongly. Contact the National Association of Catholic Nurses. Those who are already Catholic nurses, please consider uniting with this wonderful organization because we need that professional training, but we need more than anything else to encourage one another to be centered in the Lord Jesus Christ and in the good news of his church. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.